Dear friends, you are welcome to a very important topic, how to deal with fear and depression. I'm Elder Dr. Prosper Tito from the Healing Christian Center in the United Kingdom. This is a very important topic and I pray that the Lord will lead us even as we go through it. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, the enemy is defeated according to John chapter 10 verses 9 to 10. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come against every spirit of fear and depression. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? According to your word in Psalm 118, verse 6. During the Great Depression, Unemployment hit 25% of the American population. Savings accounts were wiped out by bank failures. Farmers lost their land to repossessions and people were having trouble just feeding their families. During this dark time, Franklin Delano Roosevelt addressed the nation in these words. Quote, let me assert my firm belief that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Unquote. Nameless, unreasoning, unjustified terror which paralyzes needed efforts to convert retreat into advance. What most people didn't realize is that the president himself had experienced some dark hours during which fear paralyzed him. Roosevelt was born a child of privilege and educated in Europe at Harvard and at Columbia Law School. But at age 39, he was stricken with a case of polio that left him severely disabled. During his recovery, he developed an extreme fear of fire. He worried he wouldn't be able to escape because of his disability. But in, in time, he overcame his fear, regained the use of his hands, and even learned to walk again with the aid of braces. He re-entered the political arena, fearlessly campaigning to become the governor of New York, which he did in 1929. He then went on to become one of America's greatest presidents and guided the nation to victory in World War II. In his memoirs, Roosevelt recalls how when he turned to God for help, courage and guidance, he received them. Dear friend, are you afraid today? If you are, stand on this promise. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what can man do to me. Let us pray. Let's trust in the Lord. Numbers chapter 11 verses 21 to 23. And Moses said, The people whom I am among are 600,000 men on foot. Yet you have said, I will give them meat that they may eat for a whole month. Shall flocks and herds be slaughtered for them to provide enough for them? Or shall all the fish of the sea be gathered together? For them, 
to provide food for them. And the Lord said to Moses, Has the Lord's arm been shortened? Now you shall see whether what I say would happen to you or not. Let us pray. Lord, teach us to trust you completely at all times and in every situation, knowing that you are more than able to do above that we ever ask or think. Amen. Continue dealing with fear and depression. We will later on touch on the common causes of fear and sometimes depression. I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Genesis chapter 3 verse 10. We tend to think that successful people are exempt from fear. Nothing could be farther from the truth. Every generation in history has experienced fear. The first person God created was Adam, and the first recorded words Adam spoke were these, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. Fear is genetic, it's part of human nature, and which will find that studies confirm that our seven greatest areas of fear are these one finances two health three career concerns four parenting struggles five family relationships six accomplishing personal goals and seven death let's reflect on this which one is the area of your greatest fear are you fearful and anxious in any of those areas? Fear can be a destructive force in your life. One of the old English words for fear means sudden attack. It's akin to an old German word for fear that means ambush or snare. That's what fear does. It attacks us and takes us captive. So what's the answer? Faith in God. Fear weakens, but faith strengthens. Fear imprisons, but faith liberates. Fear paralyzes, but faith empowers. Fear disheartens, but faith encourages. Fear sickens, but faith heals. It's been said that the words fear not are recorded in scripture 366 different times if that is so god has given us a fear not for every day of the year and one for leap year and here is one of them fear not for i have redeemed you i have called you by your name put your name there you are mine isaiah isaiah chapter 43 verse 1 so today I want to assure you that god is with you dear friend and he promises to strengthen and guide you in every situation you face not some situations in every situation shall we pray even for god's purpose to be realized in our lives we pray according to ephesians chapter 3 verses 20 to 21 now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. 
Father, we ask that you accomplish your purpose in our lives through your mighty power at work within us more than we ever ask or think. Amen. Continue to deal with fear. Fear came upon me and trembling, which made all my bones shake. Job chapter 4, verse 14. Fear can be devastating. Why? Because it breeds more fear. And the most insidious thing about fear is its ability to exaggerate. See Everett Coop, former Surgeon General of the United States, observed. People just have an inappropriate sense of what is dangerous. Unquote. Do you fear flying? The fact is, you are more likely to die from choking on a piece of food than in a commercial airline crash. Are you afraid of dying in a robbery? You are twice as likely to be killed playing a sport than you are to be stabbed to death by a stranger. Are you afraid of sharks? Every year, farmyard pigs slay more people than sharks do. Are you worried about having surgery? You are 16 times more likely to die in a car crash than you are from surgical complications. Seldom do the things we fear come to pass. In our minds, we conceive coming disasters that will likely never happen. And when they don't occur, we think that was a close one. The truth is, our thoughts were the only things creating potential danger for us. So how should you deal with your fears? By practicing the truth of this scripture. You will guard him and keep him in perfect peace, whose mind, that is both his inclination and character, is stayed on you because he commits himself to you, leans on you, and hopes confidently in you. So trust the Lord. Commit yourself to him. Lean on him. Hope confidently in him forever. For the Lord God is an everlasting rock, the rock of ages. Isaiah 26, verses 3 to 4. Let us pray. For abundant grace, according to 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 14. You can read it with me prayerfully. And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. Father, we pray that your abundant grace you have bestowed through Jesus Christ will flow through us and fill us with love and faith. Amen. Dealing with fear. As soon as their feet touch the water, the, water, the river will stand up like a wall. Joshua chapter 3, verse 13. To enter the promised land, the Israelites had to cross the river Jordan at flood stage. Were they afraid? Wouldn't you be? Nevertheless, the only way to reach their destiny was to do the very thing they feared. When you let fear take hold, you become even more fearful and end up creating a debilitating cycle that works like this. Fear breeds lack of action. Lack of action breeds lack of experience. Lack of experience breeds ignorance. And ignorance breeds fear. It makes you afraid to do the very thing that will be beneficial to you. Taking action means you will have to move into the unknown and do the untried. And that can be scary. But if you give in to your 
fears, you won't move forward. You don't receive the benefit of what you avoid, nor do you gain the valuable experience that will make your life better. As a result, you remain ignorant about that area of life. And ignorance always breeds more fear, making it that much harder to push ahead and get things done. Harry Truman remarked, quote, The worst danger we face is the danger of being paralyzed by doubts and fears. This danger is brought on by those who abandon faith and sh sheer and sneer at hope by those who spread cynicism and distrust and try to blind us to our great chance to do good for all mankind." Unquote. Somebody said, fear is the dark room where all our negatives are developed. It's interest paid in advance on a debt you may never owe and it undermines faith in yourself in others and in God. Let us pray for love and forgiveness even at this time as we prepare ourselves and looking at the life of Joseph. According to Genesis chapter 45 verses 3 to 5 Example of how forgiveness wipes away fear then Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Does my father still live? But his brothers could not answer him, for they were dismayed in his presence. And Joseph said to his brothers, Please come near to me. So they came near. Then he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. But now do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves, because you sold me here, for God sent me before you to preserve life. Heavenly Father, let us experience the full power of love and forgiveness working through us by our faith in Christ Jesus, so that we shall be redeemed and set free from fear and set others also free from fear in jesus name amen dealing with fear and depression we continue the lord is the strength of my life of whom shall i be afraid psalm 27 verse 1 an old adage says fear makes the wolf bigger than he is it exaggerates the problem and as a result you expend valuable energy in ways you shouldn't for example sometimes you avoid things that can't really harm you at all like the man who returned to his holiday cabin from a hike badly scratched and bruised what happened his wife asked i met a snake on the trail he answered don't you remember his wife responded the park ranger told us yesterday that none of the snakes up here are poisonous her husband replied they don't have to be poisonous if they can make you jump off a 20 foot cliff clearly the man's fear not the snake was a problem charles Spurgeon one said anxiety does not empty tomorrow of its sorrows but today of its strengths unquote as long as you allow fear to take the wheel you will never go where god wants to take you or discover and develop the talents he has placed within you and here is the great thing god will help you to confront and conquer the fears that are controlling you. David, the giant slayer, author of Psalms and Israel's beloved king, often 
found himself with his back to the wall. Writing about such an occasion, he said, Make haste to help me, Lord, Psalm 38, verse 22, and also be pleased to deliver me, Psalm 40, verse 13. But David knew who to turn to. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When God is the source of your strength, you can face your worst enemies. In Jesus' name. Shall we pray? Let us pray that we will be focused and not distracted. We'll be focused and not distracted. When we read a story in Numbers, as they went to spy the land after 40 days, Numbers 13, verse 25 to 33, now they departed and came back to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh, they brought back word to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And as we know, they mentioned about the giants that they were in the land, but Caleb was focused and he said, he quieted the people, their fears and anxiety and said, let us go up at once and take possession, for we are able, well able to overcome it. Heavenly Father, please let us not be immersed in current realities such that we forget the abundance of your grace and power as displayed in time past. Amen. Dealing with fear and depression. What I dreaded has happened to me. Job 3 verse 25. Do you ever fantasize about solutions to problems you fear may or will come your way? Ironically, when you do, what started out as an unfounded fear can turn into a real problem because you expended energy on wasteful thinking instead of productive action. Joe Tai, author of Never Fear, Never Quit, says, quote, wishing or wishful thinking is the lock that fear puts on the prison gates. Fear lets you indulge yourself for a while in flights of wishful thinking. Somehow, you think something will happen to make the problems go away. By the time you wake up, it's too late. What you feared has happened, and fear has defeated you. The only way to escape from the prison of fear is action. You cannot wish your way out. You cannot wait your way out. You can only work your way out. Every time you escape the prison of fear, you grow stronger. Unquote. Fear has no benefits and no upside. It either pushes you in the wrong direction by producing nervous energy that causes you to do your worst in new situations or it saps your energy as you fight its paralyzing effects. Psychologist Randall B. Hamrock observed, quote, in 20 years of practice, I've talked with, tested, and given vocational counsel to at least 10,000 young men and women. One characteristic that almost all had was the tendency to sell themselves short, unquote. Don't let fear rob you of your potential. 
Don't let it make you smaller than you really are. Believe God for great things. Then stop, step out and attempt to do them in His strength. If you do, you will succeed. This is guaranteed. Let us pray. Blessing in giving. Even at this time, as we receive, let us also give. Give our time, give our energy, and give of our substance, even to those even who are living in fear. By even what we have received so far, even as we go on. As Proverbs chapter 3, verses 9 to 10 says, Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty, and your vats with, will overflow with new wine. Lord, as we honor you with our income, let your abundant blessings be made manifest in every area of our lives, even as we support others also. In Jesus' name. And the final aspect of dealing with fear, God has not given us a spirit of fear. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 During the American Revolution, Spain gained control of the Bahamas. In April of 1783, Andrew Dever, a lieutenant colonel from South Carolina, recruited a handful of militiamen and Harbor Island settlers to retake Nassau using a clever strategy. Devoe had only 200 men with him, a far smaller force than that of the Spanish, but he managed to capture the high ground on the island after brief skirmish. The Spaniards then watched as boats repeatedly ferried load after load of men from diverse ships to his defensive position on the shore. What the Spaniards didn't know was that the same men kept going back and forth, standing up on their trip over to the island and hiding themselves by lying low in the boat on the trip back to the ships. The leader of the Spanish troops, fearing a defeat from a larger force in an invulnerable position, surrendered. When you succumb to fear, you are already beaten. People ruled by fear stay where it is safe. And that is sad because you can't reach your potential by staying where it is safe. Shakespeare said, quote, our doubts are traitors and they make us lose what we oft might win by fearing to attempt, unquote. What would you attempt in life if you were sure you couldn't fail? Think about it. Before you answer, read these words of David. When I cry out to you, my enemies will turn back. I know because God is for me. Psalm 56 verse 9. Believe that God is on your side today and declare this. Then step out and attempt the thing you are afraid to do. You will never be the same again. You will be liberated. In Jesus' name. Thank you, dear friend, even for your attention and your time. I pray that the Lord himself will deliver us from every fear and depression. And bless you. And have a wonderful day. Even as you share this with friends and family. You never know, there may be somebody somewhere who needs this message. And don't forget to press 
on the subscribe button and also the notification bell so that you receive future messages and other existing messages similar to this. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.